I decided to do this movie because knowing and having the experience with Dr. Edward Harty in Connemara, in the countryside of Ireland, was one of the most inspiring and unpredictable works I could experience as a medical student. And I just got mesmerized by rural medicine. My name is Edward Harty, and I live in an island called Anakvan in Beledangan in County Gold. or state-sponsored uh, uh, care of patients uh, is where I work and do most of my uh, spend most of my time dealing with. Um, uh, I would have a small private practice. I'm out here first. Okay. I had I worked out of my house. Yeah. I worked out at the health centre in Lettermore. And I worked out of um, Letter Mullen, and I worked out of Tully, and I worked out of Kama, six different places. Yeah, it was impossible. There were no computers back then either. <laughs> and I have to say my notes wouldn't have been great at the time. Yeah. The mainland is, we just came over a bridge, mm -hmm. but this is an island, but it's joined obviously with the bridge. And then there's another island, joined a bridge. Another island and another island. So there's four islands, all joined by bridges. So uh, it's a kind of a case of uh, uh, there's only one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. It's not a good place to do a robbery. <laughs> <laughs> I did an interview for here. Yeah. And uh, it, traditionally, to come and work in Connemara, uh, for a, a GP would be usually a short stay where you would work here for a few years, get experience, and then you armed with this experience, you could go for interviews for jobs where there was greater private practice um, or it was a nice town, there were more facilities and more amenities. Um, and, you know, argue, arguably a better place to rear a family. But uh, when I came, I stayed. <laughs> so. And why you stayed? Um, I, I, I often wonder about this. I think probably because I got to know the people. I like the people. I enjoyed working here. You, you see, this is... I practice from home. On weekends and at night. If I have to. Yeah. Yeah. And then... This is a, a little surgery, it's a little bit untidy, but it works, doesn't it? It works. Yeah, this Very works, um, and uh, we have sort of, just on weekends and at night when I'm on call, I do seven nights a week on call, uh, or seven nights a month on call, um, and it kind of breaks up to two weeks I will do one night on call, uh, one week I will do three nights on call, and one week I will do two nights on call, and that's how it works. And um, for the most part, I tend to get sleep at night, but I will often be woken, you know, and sometimes more than once. So you can be extremely tired the next day, and one of the problems in the job that I do is the fact that I have to work after being a night on call where I might have been up, and I'm cranky. I'm particularly cranky when I'm walking at night. Okay. And a lot of the GPs, you know, here used to travel by bike. Okay. My, there was a guy here, 
um, one of my colleagues, he's dead now, he died about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and he, his father was a GP out here from about 1941, which is, what, 41, 60, plus 75 years ago, but he used to travel by bike. To met patients? Way up here. He really? travelled 17 or 18 miles on a bike. Okay. Um, but see patients or just? See patients. Really? Yeah. Oh no, it wasn't for fun. <laughs> and the nurses used to travel on bicycles. Okay. And they used to have a huge distance to travel. Um, so uh, it wasn't an easy place to, um, to, to, to service, you know. Mm. It was a really difficult place to service. But um, uh, things have changed. Thankfully, Good. we go a little bit more quickly now. And we have more comforts. It was good fun. It's a lovely place. You don't have to worry about traffic. Um, you know, um, it was difficult from the point of view of um, the Irish initially because this is an Irish speaking area. So I had to learn Irish quickly and I had a headache for a long time. <laughs> uh, for the first few weeks at least anyway. It was, it was lovely. It was nice. And I, I never asked to leave. Because I had a, I also like being beside the sea. I think there's something. Um, ever since I've been in Galway as a student, I always like being by the sea, and uh, it was, it sort of, it gets into your bones and into your blood and into your psyche. This whole business about being by the sea. Constantly, you'd be meeting people in the shop, and they'd be saying, "Eddie, do you know? You know, I, I'm a good bit better now, and it's great. Thanks very much." Or, "Listen, those tablets you gave me were no good, you know." <laughs> and you have this shop. constant in the shop, you know. So you say, and you want to be as diplomatic as possible, you know, and you feel like in total um, between public and private patients, I suppose maybe sixteen, seventeen hundred patients. Okay, and I would say, okay, listen, uh, <laughs> you turn left where there's a plastic, a, a green plastic bag on a, a tight <laughs> turn. But you have to use things like, you know. The challenges nowadays tend to come more from uh, trying to deal with um, the mountains of paperwork that we have to do, which impacts on the amount of time that. Uh, we can spend them with patients. I heard recently that I think you'll go on until you're 72. Until you're 72, you can work until 72. Okay. Yeah, if you wish and if you're healthy enough, you know. Good. You know, so, uh, which means that I could have uh, another, uh, what? 50 years, right? Eight years. <laughs> extremely lucky. I have absolutely no regrets about it. My only regret is that maybe I can't do it for another 20 years or 30 years, you know. 